morning we're going to take the players that have played last night to the pool so they can do a recovery session. Um, this helps with their recovery after the game, helps sort of flush out any of the toxins that um, they've got in their body from the game. Some of the players that haven't played will come and they'll do a little blowout session at the pool as well. A uh, blowout session uh, is a term we use basically for a high intensity session. So if players haven't played um, or they've only played a limited amount of time, we'll say they'll do a blowout session. That's basically where we work them hard um, for a short period of time, 20, 30 minutes, give them a good training stimulus um, to kind of replace what they didn't get yesterday in the game. So yeah, the guys are just having a little bit of a warm up yep. um, and then we're going to do some short, sharp interval stuff. So they're going to work for periods of time between 15 seconds and 30 seconds, um, give them a little bit of recovery and we'll do quite a few quite a few reps. So they'll be in a little bit of pain by the end. <laughs> He's still going. Out. My hands have gone wrinkly. I've been in here that long. So some of the guys that played yesterday, um, they're doing more of a pool-based recovery session. So there's no real physical outcomes from the session. It's more just about recovery. So they'll do a little bit low intensity and then they'll do some stretching as well. And the hydrostatic pressure of the water sort of aids their recovery. So they'll be in there for about 20 minutes or so. Now the guys are in the ice baths, um, so they're immersed in water of 7.4 degrees, um, so this helps their recovery, um, reduces any swelling um, and yeah, just hopefully speeds up their recovery bit for the next game. Get me out! It's the first two minutes. It's about tours. With us set up here, obviously the players can get in at any point, um, so we kind of leave it open to them. We would, you know, we make it compulsory after matches um, and the rest of the time if they want to get in once or twice a day then that's kind of their choice. They generally, although they hate it, they do feel better for doing it so we leave it up to them. Sometimes like we don't have enough space to be able to have that white bath out because it was quite big um, so they actually custom made the wheelie bin type solution which is the one Kaz is in at the moment. Um, I think sometimes players prefer it because they don't actually get as the water doesn't go as high so it might be why she's in there. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, the food that we provide the players is high carbohydrate, high protein food. Um, so we try and have a few different options. So today we have meat lasagna um, and then vegetarian option of lasagna, just in case we have any vegetarians. Chicken, fish, um, and then vegetables and also some rice and spaghetti. Um, mixtures of salads. Obviously, we do understand that you know it's a long time, four weeks that we're away, and you know we do try and let the players have a few little treats as and when, but we try and normally do that before the games as opposed to in the tournament. Thanks. Yeah, we're just going to try and work, work the players that didn't play yesterday. Um, so yeah, we just get them a little bit of high speed running, a little bit of general conditioning. Um, so yeah, so they're up to speed. It will be hard today. It will be hard today with the heat. Um, but there's no excuse. We're still working hard. Come on, Rob. we're looking at live heart rates um, from the session that the players are actually doing at the moment um, which allows us to track what's actually happening make sure that in this scenario we want the players to work hard um, so we want the heart rates to be high sometimes same match day minus one we might want the heart rates to be lower when we'll obviously try and control the tempo a little bit more um, so basically we've got a box at the well we've got one box per player the two numbers at the top are looking at actual heart rate as it currently is now and what percentage that is of their maximum heart rate. Um, so in this scenario, the higher the heart rate the better, obviously not always the case. Um, so yeah, it just allows us to keep a live check on what's happening and adapt the session if we need to. So at the moment what I'm doing is downloading and kind of combining the GPS information and the heart rate information and also linking that up to the scores that the players give me in terms of how hard they found the training sessions. Yeah, it's really important to um, ask the players how hard they found the session and to get any information from them because the numbers tell us one story, um, but obviously it's important to speak to the players, find out how hard they found it. We use a score from zero to 10 um, and they rate how hard the session was, but also sometimes at the end of the session, 
they might give away little comments saying that their legs feel a little bit sore or some other kind of subjective information which then obviously we can put with the numbers and kind of create a whole picture. So total distance covered incorporates everything they do, walking, jogging, etc. The high speed running looks specifically at when they run over a certain speed um, and that gives us more of an indication of when the session is going to be harder. All the information goes into a big spreadsheet um, which then we feed back the relevant points to the coaches. What we try to do is relate, relate everything to a game so we've recorded a number of games on the GPS and the heart rate systems so therefore we know on average what a central midfielder does, what a fullback does in a session and therefore we can relate each training session as percentages of what they do in a game which obviously is easier for the coaches to understand if I can say that session was about 50% of what they do in a game that makes a little bit more sense to the coaches and also to the players as well for them to understand. All the information that we gather just helps us get a better picture of where the players are at so obviously we monitor them from sort of morning through to night you can get information on heart rates, subjective monitoring, GPS information it just helps us build a better picture of where each individual player is at and it's really important to think about the individual player you know although it's a team sport different players are going to respond differently to the stimulus we give them um, they're going to recover at different rates so just getting that individual picture helps us really improve hopefully their performance by you know the small margins one or two percent which hopefully has a massive impact on what they're going to do on the pitch.